It's a super duper high speed charger, or is it? So this one came in Samsung packaging and it's all wrapped up to make it look posh. Look, it's got that plastic film around it that they do. And it's got very generous ratings. Uh, where's the listing for this? It says, 3 in 1, 65 watt max charger plug. Two type C plus one USB port, 65 watt, 25 watt, and 15 watt from the 5 volt supply. And this was 15 pounds. It's quite an expensive ish charger. I mean, not if it was real, but this is not real because if, if it was actually Samsung, you'd be saying, yes, it's a Samsung charger. And it is marked as such, but ignore all the markings in these. Uh, I have plugged it in. Well, let me plug it in. Let me get the little power meter. Where's the power meter? There's a power meter. And I shall plug it in here. And get the little power meter into the 5 volt section. And it does actually say 5.15 volt. This is good. We shall get uh, the controllable load and plug it into it. And we'll ramp it up. Now let me zoom down this. So you can actually see what we're getting here. So it's holding 5 volts. It's at an amp. That's pretty good. Uh, Someone's saying, why doesn't the fan run? It only runs when it gets hot enough to run. Uh, 1.6 amps. This should go up to 3 amps theoretically. The voltage of the 5 volts is starting to drop off now. 4.9 and it's cut out. So that was just below 2 amp. Uh, I plugged other things into the other ports and I uh, could not get anything to fast charge. So... Um, Let's explore what's inside and see if there's any fast charge circuitry at all. I'm not holding my breath. Now, how does this come apart? It looks as though it comes out from that end. There are screws here. Hmm. Hold on one moment, please. And resume. Now I have the screwdriver. So let's remove this, although I get the feeling this might not be holding it together. This might purely be to retain the classic British fold-out plug. Is this going to come off? Is it going to come off? Maybe it's not going to come off. Hold on, let's just prise that out like that. Does that reveal anything? No, it doesn't. Okay, well, it was worth a go. Right, what about the spudger? Is this even going to get in here? Is this where it's supposed to go in? Am I just breaking this? Probably. Well, I'll just break it. I'll put it in the vice and I'll give it a wee squeeze. Uh, Where's the vice? I'm not really re planning on using this regardless because without a known pedigree, you just don't know what you're getting from an electrical safety perspective. My, it, my original opinion still stands. I regard uh, IKEA charges as one of the best value for the quality at the moment. Right, I'm going to smack this off camera so it doesn't deafen everybody. Has that done anything? Squeeze it a bit more. I may have to pause if this doesn't uh, doesn't surrender its secrets in short measure. I have a sneaky feeling I'm going to have to pause, haven't I? Yeah, I'm going to have to pause. This thing is glued shut. Maybe they just don't want us into it. Oh, no, no. Look at this. Look at this scrunchy, scrunchy. Oh, what have we got? Let's grip it with a pair of long nose pliers and hoik it out. I'll put the... Vice of knowledge down since it has achieved its purpose. Let's grab the circuit board gently. And there is a slab of steel sitting on two transformers. It's a piece of steel. Oh, that's very hefty. That's very good value. That must be all the power in it. And what do we have in here? God, why have they done that? They've got two bridge rectifiers. Look at it. Two completely separate circuits uh, supplying... Do they have power delivery? Right, tell you what, I shall analyse the circuitry. One moment, please. Okay, let's explore. And I have to say, surprise of all surprise, this thing can actually negotiate higher output voltages. It does have the facility to do that, and it's done, done it in a very, very weird way, as you shall see. So the incoming supply has a token gesture little inductor that probably doubles as the fuse, uh, 100 microhenry, and then it goes to two separate bridge rectifiers. They could have just used one, but they've used two separate bridge rectifiers feeding two smoothing capacitors. That's quite odd, because then it just feeds two parallel supplies. They've literally just done a 
cookie cutter copy of the power supply right down the middle, including two class Y suppression capacitors. Very, very odd. The chip is an SDC 5091T. I drew a blank in that. Uh, it's a very simple chip. It's only got a few connections. Maybe you guys will have more luck finding that. On the output side, we have two notable things. On one section of the circuitry, if I bring this in, uh, on one side of the circuitry, we have a short key diode, just as the rectifier on the secondary side. On the other side, we've got a synchronous rectifier. Um, and then we've got two opto isolators. The two opto isolators are important, as, as are the 431. These are little voltage regulators, and they're actually controlled from these sort of vertical stacking modules, which are quite odd. It's these tiny, tiny little modules here. Let me show you a close-up of those little modules. Anything else worth mentioning here? Not really. There's the snubber network to the power supply. There's the feedback circuitry with the opto isolator. It's very, very simple. It's one of the most extraordinarily simple little chips I've come across. It must be a rip-off of another chip. The little stick-up modules here have um, mixed functionality. The small one is just for a single output, and uh, it can use this chip marked N603, and then underneath it says DH, Again, I drew a blank in that, but it can uh, negotiate uh, voltages for that socket, depending on the communication it gets. The other side is doing double duty. It has two MOSFETs. One is switching power to this socket on board, but the other one is actually monitoring the data lines and switching power and controlling the uh, external USB connector. This connector here. It's actually tied in. It's switched through this little module. I'll show you the circuit board. That may make more sense. Uh, I could also mention this uh, chip here, 6606ACA, and then a date code, 2230, 30th week of 2022. I drew a blank for 6606ACA. I tried other keywords, including like... Uh, you know, quick charge or, or stuff like that. The various USB permutations, I had no joy whatsoever. Here is the circuitry. I've drawn one section and left off a bit the output circuitry because uh, the chips, again, there's no data in them. It's quite hard to decipher them. But this is the main bit we're interested in. Here's the one micro Henry inductor on live, and we get neutral there, and it goes to the bridge rectifiers, and then to a 15 microfarad capacitor to give the supply for the switch mode power supply. Here is the primary winding, and there's the little snubber network across it. Quite unusual to save space in the circuit board. On one, they put the capacitor and resistor down here and the diode up there. The point of the snubber network is that when this chip turns off, uh, there's initially, as the field collapses, before the secondary side can kick in, there's a, a sharp voltage transient. This capacitor absorbs that via this diode, and it only absorbs a tiny little portion, and then it's uh, the rest of the energy gets dumped through to the other side. But then uh, this resistor just keeps trickle discharging that just to make sure it's ready for the next spike. Here's the chip, the SDC 5091T. Very minimalist. It's got the uh, connection. It's got no sense resistors. It just seems to be fixed. It's got a connection to the zero volt rail. It's got its own little 22 microfarad power supply capacitor and then the feedback from the opto later with a 2K resistor and a capacitor across it for filtering and stability, presumably. Not sure quite how. It must use a current limited supply inside to trickle itself a, a uh, supply voltage from the primary circuit. There is a 2.2 nanofarad capacitors. There's two of them, so that's going to be extra juicy on the other side. For simplicity, I've used the short key side because the circuitry is identical after that, <clears throat> apart from when it goes out to the actual chips. So there's a the short key diode that is doing the rectifying. No snubber across it. And there is a 680 microfarad 16 volt polymer capacitor. By the look of it. it is the red capacitors, the ones with the solid polymer electrolyte, I think. You can't really tell. I'm pretty sure there will be standard cheap electrolytics branded as polymer just because that's what China's like at times. Here is the LED in the opto isolator it's signaling back to that side. And initially, current can flow through this 1K resistor. There's a 2K resistor across the LED for um, stability. And then it's got a uh, 431, which is the absolute classic uh, voltage reference 
component, a little three pin component that you supply a 2.5 volt reference via a divider onto its control pin and uh, you can set a voltage threshold which it will turn on. So in this case, they've got a 100k resistor and a 95.3k resistor. So that effectively, say, that's going to be just near as best as near half the uh, supply rail of 5 volts. So initially when you power this up, this thing is programmed to pass current at uh, 5 volts. And when it does so, it lights the LED and it basically regulates this back so that it just keeps a constant 5 volts. The circuitry here can actually pull that uh, this resistor it can bypass it, it can pull it down lower so that this uh, so the voltage on there has to go higher but it's going straight to the pin of a chip it doesn't have I thought it was going to switch in uh, other resistors but it does it seems to be going straight to some sort of digital to analog convert perhaps and what whenever that kicks in it can basically monitor the supply rail and it can actually put an extra effectively load on this until it sees the supply rail reach what it wants it's very unusual, very peculiar. And technically speaking, if it was programmed to cut out at uh, 2 volt, 2, two amps, I say, as it did, technically speaking, I don't think they're nego going to negotiate above 15 volts because these are 60 volt capacitors. Uh, it does say in the, the guide that it, you know, it, it quotes ridiculous voltages. It doesn't go up there. It's not that would exceed the rating of these capacitors. But it does make me think that if it did go as far as 15 volts, it might not, maybe it just goes 9, but it might be 15, uh, then uh, that multiplied by the 2 and on both sides would be about 30 watts each side, theoretically. And then we have this weight. The circuit board weighs 27 grams. The weight they put on top is 26 grams. Aside from the fact that transformers are probably not wound to our standards, this metal weight was just placed on. It wasn't stuck on. It hadn't had the backing pulled off here, so it was kind of loose to move. And in doing so, it could basically bridge between the, the grounded metal or output, and it could ground to the side of a capacitor and post, potentially a braid through it if it was loose. And that wouldn't necessarily give a direct connection, but it means that it, break, it breaks the sort of separation distance because the shells of the capacitors are not rated for handling, although they're not directly connected to the two uh, connections it's not something you should consider as being sort of isolated either so that's very strange but they've doubled the weight of the circuitry just for the steel weight just stuffed into that case but there we have it it's not as bad as i thought it was going to be but it's not great either it is just a peculiar little thing but there we have it the kind of expensive uh unit that i should have tested further but you know what I just was not going to plug expensive devices into a cheap, well, not or, or expensive, uh, unidentifiable power supply from China because you just don't really know it. If it's unbranded, you just don't know the standards of it, isolation. And plugging an expensive device into that is not a good idea, just in case it goes bang. But there we have it. It did contain surprises. It also contained a bit of deception. It's the crappy USB power supply from eBay.